Superman of science And he loves to play with fire And the things you do You can do If you so desire Do try this at home With Mr. G Hello and welcome back To Do Try This at Home I'm your host, Mr. G, and I've got some poison ivy on the side of my face here and some real nasty poison ivy on my wrist, as you can see. So I hope you don't get too grossed out. It just means I'm all ready for Halloween, which is this weekend. What we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about something called the Bernoulli Principle. The Bernoulli Principle states that if you've got any kind of a fluid in motion, the pressure inside that moving fluid is lower than the pressure outside of the moving fluid and fluid that's motionless. So that means if you have a stream of air, the air pressure in the stream of air is lower than the pressure outside of the stream. We see this a lot in our everyday life. A great example is when you get in the shower and take a shower, water coming out of the shower head shoots down and it pushes air with it. Now we've got moving air in the shower which creates a lower pressure. What happens to the shower curtain? It gets sucked into the shower. I'm going to demonstrate the Bernoulli Principle using some ordinary household items. And the ordinary household items that we're going to use today are a balloon, some ping pong balls, a funnel, um, a blow dryer, a bendable drinking straw, whoops, there's something in front of that blow dryer, and a metal ball bearing. Bendable drinking straw, ball bearing, and a little plastic funnel as well. Let's start out on kind of a medium scale, what we're going to do here next is, is whoops, there go my ping pong balls. Let me try to get that staying in one spot along with the ball bearing. I know what I'll do. I'll just hide everything underneath this funnel. Perfect. Now, with the blow dryer, we want it on a cool setting. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to, first of all, we're going to move a fly out of the way. There we go. I'm going to turn the, the blow dryer on, on low. I'm going to hold the cool button in so the air's not hot. I'm going to take my ping pong ball, and I'm going to put it on top of the dryer. Now, the air current's not high enough or fast enough for the ball to float, so I'm going to turn it up. And look at that, the ball floats. Now, you say, well, that's nothing, so watch this. I can actually angle the blow dryer to one side or to another, and the ball wants to stay in the moving air. Turn the blow dryer off and the ball falls right down. So we notice that the ball tried to track the flow, meaning that the pressure in the flow was lower and air pressure outside the flow was keeping the ball. If it tried to get out, it pushed it back into the flow. Let's do the same thing with a balloon. The balloon's kind of cool. Here we go. I'm going to use the low setting for the balloon. Wow, I don't know if you can see that with the angle of that handle. So I'm going to move back a little bit and we'll do it from down here. Look at that. The balloon just floats in the current of air. Now, I've got the blow dryer pointed straight up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to point it more to my right. It will be your left. Look at that. The balloon moves to the left. I'm going to point the air current back this way to my left, which would be your right. And look at this, the balloon. Look how far the blow dryer is angled. Yet the balloon wants to stay in the air current. It fell out there for a second. Pretty amazing, huh? The Bernoulli Principle. Now, I'm gonna show you how you can win some money with a bet utilizing the Bernoulli Principle. An ordinary ping pong ball in a small funnel. Now, normally you would say that if I were to put that ping pong ball in a funnel and blow as hard as I could through the funnel, that ping pong ball should shoot out, right? Right at you. Let's try it. Nope. Sorry. Fell out. Let's try it. Ready? Here we go. It didn't fly out. The reason for that is because the, the air coming out of the funnel creates a flow pattern where air is moving along the edges of the funnel and it's moving fast in a conical shape. The air up here above the funnel has no motion because the ping pong ball is pretty much blocking that air from going straight up so the current comes out to the sides. Therefore we've got higher air pressure above the ball pushing it back into the funnel. Now watch this. You could bet someone that if they put a ping pong ball underneath a funnel like that without touching the ball, 
you're going to bet them that they cannot pick the funnel up and have the ball remain in the funnel. There's like no way to do this. Try to get it spinning. Nope, that didn't work. Now a lot of people will try to suck on the funnel to get this to happen, but I'm going to tell you it's the opposite. You want to blow as hard as you can. Here we go. Ready? You got to really be blowing hard and steady up for this one. You're going to hold the funnel here, and you're going to go like this. Here we go. Did you see that? It lifted up the ping pong ball. Now, if I can blow long enough, I can turn the funnel over and capture the ping pong ball in the funnel. Let's give it a try. And it worked. The ping pong ball stayed in the funnel. That was fantastic. If I take a ball bearing, it's a pretty heavy ball bearing, and, and I balance it on the end of a drinking straw like this. Now this is one of those bendable drinking straws. If you, if you move the straw to one side or another, it doesn't take very much for that straw, or for that ball bearing I should say, to fall off of that straw. Very much movement to one side or another. A little bit of movement, ball bearing falls off. Now, I should actually be able to move this further to one side or another utilizing the Bernoulli principle. Let's find out. Definitely was able to get a little bit further over with the Bernoulli principle because the air pressure that's outside the airflow is keeping the ball bearing centered. Now it's just amazing that, that you're powerful enough, and any of you can do this with your own breath, you're powerful enough just to lift the ball bearing. Let's try again. And you saw, eventually it did. The weight of the ball bearing eventually did take it out of the stream. Let's try the same thing though with a lighter ball, this time with a ping pong ball. Now the ping pong ball's larger, so it's gonna be a little bit harder maybe to get it balanced, but it takes very little movement side to side, obviously, to, for it to fall off. It falls off very easily. As you can see, it's hard to keep it there. Now, let me blow into the straw, lowering the air pressure in the stream of air. Much easier to keep the ping pong ball above the straw. Okay, we're going to try the effect on a lot larger scale using a leaf blower and a basketball. Here we go. That was pretty cool. The basketball didn't get up real high, but you saw that it was floating above the nozzle of the leaf blower. Okay, while we're out here, I thought that I would show you because some people asked, how do I spin this basketball on my finger? Well, basically, you want to give it a good hard spin so that the ball is parallel to the ground. You don't want it spinning this way or this way. You want to practice spinning it level, like that. When you give it a good hard spin, pop it up in the air, and let it land on your finger. Now, this does require some balance. As you can see, it's um, it's a, uh, and you can keep the ball going by hitting the ball, whoops, while it's spinning. I'm not hitting that so well, but you can keep it going for quite a long time that way. Now, one other thing you can try is this. Take the ball, get it going good, and then when you get it real stable, bounce it off your knee, and then catch it again. I'm Mr. G. See you next time on Do, even if you've got poison ivy, try this at home. Hello and welcome back to Do Try This at Home. I'm your host, Mr. G, and Do Try This is a... Yeah, Do Try This is... Now if you get really good at this, here's something else that you can try.